How does rhetoric affect the persuasiveness of the author Brendan Burrell? In this lesson, you will learn how to identify an author's persuasiveness by analyzing the use of rhetoric. Rhetoric is the skill in using language effectively and persuasively. In earlier lessons, author Brendan Burrell has used several rhetorical devices or techniques in his writing. His problem and solution structure in presenting Blake's guilt or innocence engages me. His repetition of key terms allows me to identify central ideas. His use of a character foil provides experiences by which I can judge Blake's actions. His style and content effectively mix objective and subjective information, forcing me to analyze. His specific word choice affects how serious I think Blake's crime is. His inclusion of specific direct quotes casts more guilt on Blake. Let's look at the steps we're going to use in this lesson. First, after rereading the conclusion, we'll ask what appears to be the final determination made by the author. Next, we'll ask what support does the author present to lead to this finding. And finally, we will ask how does the author contrive to influence the reader in the conclusion. Since I want to know how the author's use of rhetoric may persuade me as a reader, I begin by rereading the conclusion. I want to determine if the author is presenting an answer to the question about the provenance of Blake's di diamond. In the conclusion, I find the statements, for a while, it seemed Blake's alleged chicanery was no longer the talk of Murfreesboro. It was Tyrell's big day, and no one around there doubts that Tyrell's stone is legitimate. In my opinion, the author has answered, has answered the question. Everyone believes Blake's find, everyone questions Blake's finds, but consider Tyrell's find legitimate. Therefore, they believe Blake bought foreign diamonds and planted them in Arkansas. Now I want to see the explanation the author presents in order to support his findings. As his concluding uh, sentence, the author writes, Stollert sees him, meaning Tyrell, out in the park nearly every day, sorting through pebbles and taking home samples to examine come nightfall. The author supports his answering by pro providing proof that Tyrell can actually be seen working on a daily basis by the park official. On the other hand, Blake is only known to the park official to visit occasionally and has very little contact with him. Now I'm ready to move on to the final step to determine how the author contrives to influence me by writing the conclusion the way he does. In reality, the support the author offers in its conclusion is not true evidence. Just because someone shows up every day to dig in the dirt does not prove that he actually found the diamond there. Isn't it possible that, Ty that Tyrell also could have planted his diamond and pretended to dig it out? Throughout the article, Tyrell has served as a foil to Blake. The author continually presents Tyrell as an honest, hard-working man. I find it interesting that this same comparison and contrast of the two individuals is how author Brendan Burrell supports his conclusion, rather than summarizing specific evidence. In fact, as I look back over the article to see what better support the author may have provided, I realize that little actual evidence exists. Burrell presents information, but the reader must deduce what true evidence there may be as the author describes Blake's dealings with Yin and Wang, the fossil and mineral dealer who noticed some discrep discrepancies in paperwork. Most of the condemning information is circumstantial and is provided by Burrell's own rhetoric. Therefore, it will be difficult to use in a court of law. This makes me understand how valuable rhetoric can be. Borrell substitutes rhetoric rather than argument in the conclusion, as well as throughout the entire article. He has contrived or planned the use of structure, style, and word choice to persuade me of Blake's guilt without ever directly stating that Blake is guilty. And he convinces me of Blake's guilt almost without, make, without me realizing how little evidence there actually is. However, Borrell's rhetoric, rhetoric is effective. I believe Blake is guilty of planting the diamonds. 
Now, as I ask myself, how does rhetoric affect the persuasion of the authors? I realize how effective rhetoric can be. Brendan Burrell's clever use of rhetoric strongly affects his persuasiveness. Powerful rhetoric, rhetoric allows this author to craft his writing using style, structure, and word choice with the potential of convincing the reader in the absence of strong argument. Let's review the steps we used in this lesson. First, after rereading the conclusion, we asked, what appears to be the final determination made by the author? Next, we asked, what support does the author present to lead to this finding? And finally, we asked, how does the author contrive to influence the reader in the conclusion? In this lesson, you have learned how to identify an author's persuasiveness by analyzing the use of rhetoric.